on this episode of Tiger TV, making baseball fun again. Hi, Baseball Nation. This is Spiker Holmes, where I interview the best in the business, where I try to find out what got them to the top. This is their journey, their stories, and our questions. This is Tiger TV. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Tiger TV. I'm your host, Spiker Helms. I'm here at Drury University, back down in Springfield, Missouri. And next to me, I have head coach Scott Nazmi. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Appreciate it. Now, with Drury, it's a private institution. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between private college baseball and public college baseball? Yeah. Or is there any difference? Um, I don't know about the college baseball part of it, but when you look at the academic side of it, um, as well as the support system you get at a private institution compared to a public institution. Mm. Um, a lot of times we'll have to answer that to kids who come from public schools. Um, mm. Kids who go to private schools, which, which make up a handful of our guys, not, not completely. Um, they already know the benefits of the private school. Uh, we have a, a student to faculty ratio of 10 to 1. So you're in classes of 12 to 15 kids. Okay. I think 80% of the classes we have on campus are under 20 students. So you can't hide at Drury. Uh, mm. We always tell kids, if you want to hide, go somewhere else. Yeah. That's not here. We have 1,500 students and uh, small class sizes. I'm going to see you walk into class. I'm going to see if you're late walking into class. Uh, you're going to see 15 other baseball guys walking up and down the street. Uh, campus only makes up three or four different streets. So uh, it's a small atmosphere, but we want guys who want to stand out. And we want guys who, who want that attention from, uh, from their teachers, from the staff, from the faculty. And... Um, at the private school, uh, obviously it's a little bit more expensive, mm -hmm. uh, but you get that individual attention. So when it comes time to get a job, you don't just get a degree, but you're able to get a job out of college. Now, is, is the recruiting different? That you have to recruit a little bit differently because of the academic standards, or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for, in terms of getting in academically, yeah. we have, haven't had many kids that we recruit that can't get in. Mm -hmm. If you're a qualifier, uh, you know, you're around a 3-0, uh, you're in the 20s in your ACT, you normally can get in. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you get any scholarship money, that's going to be the big part. Yeah. So um, we try to recruit the highest caliber ACT GPA type kids that we have mm -hmm. um, because it helps the families financially. Okay. Uh, it helps you afford the school maybe a little bit easier. Um, our average ACT on campus is a 26. Um, in saying that, we have a kid with a 19 on the team right now. We mm -hmm. have a kid with a 34. Okay. So um, it's about the effort you put into the classroom in terms of uh, what you're going to get out of the education. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, we try to recruit those high ACT, high GPA kids because they can get a higher amount of scholarship dollars that uh, help their families pay for the institution. And does it seem like it's more like a family culture right now? Because like yeah. it, it's, you said that it, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah. You're going to see people constantly on campus that you've seen numerous times. Is it, would you say it's more of a family oriented or is it kind of like it's just just small no it's it's, it's definitely a family you know mm -hmm. uh, family between the coaches and the players uh, you spend so much time with everyone on campus who's also a student athlete we have 360 athletes on campus of 1500 mm -hmm. so you're looking at one in five and a lot of people have the same shared experiences that you have are going through the same things you are as a student athlete uh, uh, and uh, the relationships you build with your faculty members here are a little bit different than what you would do at a, a state institution or a public institution. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our players wasn't able to make pra practice yesterday. Uh, one of the faculty members took his entire class up to Kansas City um, <laughs> on right. a uh, kind of a field trip. So yeah. up and back, you know, two vans with 15 kids uh, up and back for the day. But it's something that uh, results in uh, developing a network, developing contacts that That's results awesome. in paid internships and jobs. Yeah, and you guys had some pretty good success on the field the last two to three years. Yeah. Um, you, you guys have made that to those tournament runs in the GLBC, and that's no snoozer. Like, what's what's the recipe for success? What are you guys What are you guys doing here? That's just a little bit different. Yeah, when, when we started in two thousand seven, Coach Stratton kind of started our formula of how we recruit, mm -hmm. uh, and we've stuck to that. One, we got to have a good kid. Uh, that means you're doing the right things for the right reasons, mm -hmm. not because we're watching as a coaching staff, or yeah. not because your teammates are watching. But when we're not around, are you in the indoor facility late at night hitting? Are you getting an extra lift in? Um, or are you going out on the town on Friday nights compared yeah. to actually getting your extra reps in? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to find those good kids that do the things um, for the right reason. Yeah. Uh, two, got to be a good student. If you're not a good student, it's a, it's a struggle to get in. It's a struggle to afford it. And it's a uh, struggle to graduate. So we've never had a kid come here in 10 years. This is our 11th season. Uh, and not finish with a jury degree who's exhausted their eligibility. Oh, wow. Every single kid. So we've had some kids after a couple of years decide maybe this wasn't for me. I'll go do something different. Mm -hmm. uh, but every kid who's finished their four years has a jury degree. Okay. So you got to be a good student. Three, you got to be able to play a little bit, 
right? But we try to go one, two, three. Uh, we try to identify the good kids by talking to their coaches, mm. talking to their club coaches, um, uh, maybe visiting, doing a home visit, having the kids on campus, talking with their parents, uh, establish if they're a good academic student by looking at transcripts, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the ACT score, and then making sure we can see them play. They can get their talents in front of us, whether it's a camp, whether it's a showcase, uh, whether it's a high school game or club game, mm -hmm. and then try to evaluate all three and see if they're a good fit to be a Jury Panther. Okay. And guys, if you haven't, if you haven't, don't really know like the facilities of a Division Two. Like these are very high end facilities. And what I'm going to do is I'll I'll put everything at the end uh, with the video and showing the weight room and all of that. So um, it, it it it's baseball and softball only. It's 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 quite incredible. Um, now moving into the recruiting end, if you were 15 years old, if you could put yourself back as a 15 year old. How would you approach the recruiting process now? Yeah, um, and, and going back to what you just said about the facilities, I didn't know what a Division II program looked like growing mm -hmm. up. You know, I, I lived in California until I was 15, moved here my sophomore year of high school, and then sophomore year of high school I thought, all right, I want to go to University of Arizona. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Pepperdine. I want to go back to California. I want to I play a, the biggest D1 institution that I could play for. Um, and I really didn't know much about the, the D2s in the Midwest at that point. Uh, I was recruited by Division IIs recruited by some junior colleges, recruited by some Division I schools that ended up choosing the Division I route um, over at Missouri State um, and, uh, and, and thoroughly enjoyed my, my decision and my mm -hmm. time over there. Um, looking back on it, I probably could have got some more playing time at the Division II level, especially as a freshman. So my advice to a 15-year-old would be go watch some games. Uh, if you live in St. Louis, go watch Maryville play. Come watch us when we come up and play Elmsville this year on mm -hmm. May 5th. Yeah. Uh, go watch SLU play. Uh, go watch Mizzou play. Go watch uh, Arkansas play. You know, compare yourselves to those different levels, because when you look at a top tier D1 um, to a, a mid level D1 to a top D2 to a, a top tier JUCO, there's lots of levels of baseball. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes kids get stuck in their mind. It's D1 or D1 only. Yeah. And there's lots of different levels of D1, and there's lots of different levels of D2 and JUCO. And I think to try to get in your mind and try to realize what those levels may be before those schools start calling, you have a better idea of what you actually want. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's almost like D1 or bust. That's, what, yeah. that's, 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 what, that's the, almost the attitude. Bob, Bob Zimmerman called me, a kid yeah. I played with at Missouri State who's yeah. over in Kansas City now. Yeah. Uh, Guy who threw 100 for Missouri State. Yeah, first, <laughs> my first fall about hit me in the yeah. neck with a 97 mile an hour fastball. And then G said, go, go catch. And I had to run, I didn't even make it to first base, I had to go catch in the pen. That's, that's the life of a bullpen catcher. But uh, he called me about a month ago and he said, hey, I have a kid. Uh, velocity starting to climb. He's only five eight. Um, for him, he wanted to go to Division One, yeah. and um, and so all summer it was D one, D one only. That yeah. was it, and he didn't even really return any calls for D twos. Oh, didn't take visits, so now he's kind of behind the process, and he's realized I don't want to just join a fraternity at Mizzou. I want to continue to play. Yeah. So now he's taking some D two visits, and we've talked on the phone and seen okay. him throw. So there you kind is. of progress that way, but yeah. you know if you identify. Uh, what exactly you want out of the process. That's something I feel like we fight with kids a lot. Uh, they may get on campus as a junior, as a senior, mm -hmm. and they really don't know what they want. Yeah. You know, you'll ask them what's at the top of your list. And it's like, well, I, I want to play. Well, everyone wants to play. Yeah. But do you want to play as a freshman? Do you want to pitch on the weekend as a freshman? Um, who's starting at shortstop if you're a shortstop? Do you have a chance to start as a shortstop there? Yep. Um, and a lot of questions that need to be asked and, and as a recruit and as a family going through the process you should have a good idea of what you want out of the process before you start the process, and that can start at 15. Now, last question. If you can give one piece of advice to a player or a coach right now, youth, high school, whatever, um, what, what would be that advice? Uh, I think you have to have fun. Um, even here, we, we have kids that still fight through that process. Um, had a conversation with one of our transfers last week. Um, big scout day. Lots of scouts were out there. Um, probably 20, 25 scouts came out. We do it right after Missouri State. Yep. And it was a great opportunity for our kids to be seen by scouts. Went 0 for 3. And he's a lot better than an 0 for 3 guy. Yeah. Okay? Then he hit a laser up the box in, in the fourth at-bat. But you can see the body language not being what it needed to be after mm -hmm. those first three at-bats. So we talked a little bit about are you having fun and then looking for success? Or are you having success? And that determines whether you're having fun or not. And here at Jury, and I think everywhere it should be, you need to have fun to have success. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly pressing and, and constantly uh, worried about who's watching me in the stands or what school's coming to watch me if I put up good numbers, um, and then you only have fun if you have success, you're not treating the game right. Um, and, 
and the game pays you back. Uh, if you're sulking, if you're throwing helmets, if you're not picking up teammates when they struggle, the game will pay you back a lot. Oh, yeah. And if you approach the game in a positive manner and you have fun no matter what happens, you'll enjoy to, uh, I'm sorry, you, you'll start to enjoy it a lot more when things don't go well and you'll mm -hmm. snap out of those funks quicker. Um, one of the sayings we have here is make sure the guy on the right of you and the guy on the left of you is as strong as possible. Because at some point when you're in college, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall down, and you're going to need some help. And if you got to pick yourself up, it's going to take you a lot longer than if you have two guys next to you to pick you up. Yeah. And so if you can develop uh, bonds and relationships with your teammates by helping them up throughout their careers, then when you start struggling, you got more guys helping you. Yeah. Coach, thanks for coming yeah, on the show. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Yeah. Guys, um, I will link everything down with uh, Jury's facilities as well as and show all of it on the end of this. But I'll, I'll link up their website. You can look at Coach's bio. Please take the time to take a look at it. This is a, this is a premier program, premier college program that's just right down the street from St. Louis and um, for our Indiana Tigers, um, not too far away from them as well. So uh, make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, follow us on Instagram. We're always putting out great stuff, great ideas, great tips, and yeah, that's it. See you guys. Thanks. Hey.